I recently got a comment in one of the videos that said, Chelsea boots are as ugly as Crocs. Wait till they see these. When I set out to work on my review for the Timberland Redwood Falls Chelsea boot, I grabbed the wheat and the black version and started to run them through the paces. My previous experience had been the original yellow boot, along with some more technical hikers. But I quickly learned that all things aren't equal with Timberland. As the company has grown, they've gotten into clothes, watches, backpacks, even dog collars. And as they've continued to grow, they've added footwear lines and now seem to have something at about every price point. The Redwood Falls Chelsea boot slots in at the lower end. The boot holds on to some of the classic design and technology and the environmental commitment the company makes as a whole, but it really isn't what you'd expect if you're comparing these to those. So let's lace up, or rather slip on, and review the Timberland Redwood Falls Chelsea boot. And stick around till the end to hear whether you should take these home or take a pass. I love classic brands. They've got deep history, amazing innovation, and a huge cultural impact. Doc Martens, Blundstone, L.L. Bean, Timberland, but inevitably some of those brands get pretty far afield by introducing products that just don't live up to expectations. I got a pair of those iconic Timberland yellow boots here because I wanted to see how much the Timberland stays true to the heritage and how much they stray. The Redwood Falls Chelsea boot comes with some of the classic Timberland look. It's got a brushed new buck leather, but it's just not quite the same. They're waterproof, but the color and finish of the wheat colorway just doesn't stack up to what you'd expect in the original. And even in black, they've got a bit of an odd finish that gives you just a nod to the original, but misses the mark. They do have an innovative sole, which I like a lot, but it's not quite the same if you're after the classic lug. Sometimes the whole is a little bit less than the sum of the parts, and the Redwood Falls epitomizes that quote. This new buck leather has kind of an odd shine to it, like it's been sanded too much, or that they've made it with a thinner leather that just can't hold up to the finish. They come in a range of colors that are kind of peculiar. They've got a super thin insole, a UVA midsole that are really hard as rocks to sand on. Add all that up and it's a pretty horrendous list of faults for a pair of boots that retail at 130 bucks. Nathan Schwartz, the Ukrainian-born shoemaker, bought half of the Abington Shoe Company in South Boston in 1952. He brought in his sons, and they eventually bought the whole of the company, making private label boots and shoes for other brands. In 1969, they moved the company to Newmarket, New Hampshire, and focused on making their own, first-of-their-kind, injection-molded, waterproof boots to sell to the workers and the outdoorsmen in the chilly Northeast. The company launched their iconic yellow boot in 1973, and they called it Timberland. They followed that success and ended up rebranding the whole of the company Timberland in 1978. In 1987, they took the company public under continuing family leadership until selling Timberland to the VF Corporation for $2 billion. VF is the owner of some iconic brands like Jansport, Eastpac, Dickies, Smartwool, North Face, Vans... The list seems to go on and on what they buy and sell while they currently own Timberland. Let's talk about some features and specs. The upper is made with a waterproof premium Timberland leather that comes both in lace and the Chelsea model. The upper features a full grain leather that's lightly sanded to give it a kind of rough suede-like texture, but this is new buck and new buck is actually more durable than suede. I wouldn't call it the traditional new buck, the quality you'd find in the premium 6-inch boots, but it still offers pretty good structure and durability. In their process, Timberland uses proprietary technology to impregnate the leather with silicone. And this silicone is what makes the boot waterproof. And to get that waterproof label, they actually submerge the boot to 60% of its height in water for four hours with no leakage. Most of the leather that Timberland uses across all of their boots come from U.S. cattle that are raised for food in compliance with USDA guidelines. Additionally, the company has banned leather from a number of countries where concerns about mistreatment of animals has occurred. In 2005, Timberland launched the Leather Working Group. The Leather Working Group is a nonprofit that works directly with suppliers to audit and grade tanneries on their water, energy, and waste management practices, as well as following best practices for traceability of the hides. Since they launched the group, other VF companies have joined 
and then so have other companies like Echo, Adidas, Nike, Barber, Ikea, and others. Timberland was one of the first companies to adopt injection molding as part of their manufacturing process. That process involves preforming the boot's upper, preparing a slurry of polyurethane and rubber, and then filling molds while bonding the sole and the upper together. The Redwood Falls comes with their new L7 sole. It's very different than the lug sole found on most other Timberlands, and kind of frankly what you'd expect. But this one holds a sleeker look while maintaining a bit of the chunkiness. The L7 lug features multi-directional leading edges and beveled lug sidewalls that allows for self-cleaning. And it's made from their grip stick rubber. And they call it their stickiest rubber yet. Timberland still has a big commitment to innovation. And a lot of that innovation happens at The Shed at Timberland's US headquarters in New Hampshire. What it is is a dedicated maker prototyping space where they do a lot of the testing and development for new footwear or apparel ranges. I share this in case you're lucky enough to go to Soho, New York, where you can stop by the new-ish Timberland flagship store. The decor has a little big nod to the shed and that innovation. Timberland makes their boots in Vietnam, China, Turkey, Bangladesh, India, the Philippines, and Cambodia. And I think the yellow boots are mostly made in the Dominican Republic. There are a few special runs that happen in the U.S., but not very many. When they do launch, it's a special drop and they sell out right away. Each of the redwood boots I've seen were made in Cambodia, as were these two. Let's talk about the insides. The lining of the Redwood Falls boot includes a little bit of leather down the back of the shaft and around the counter. Having leather there to protect the counter, which is this area in the back of the sole, is super important. The rest of the lining from here forward is made from what Timberland calls Rebottle. Rebottle is made entirely from recycled plastic bottles, but it's incredibly soft and breathable. Unlike boots from Blundstone or Doc Martin, Timberland also includes a little bit of cushion between the canvas and the leather. It softens them up from the start. But one of the problems with the boots is how that lining is constructed. Right here at the top of the vamp is an area on the inside where two parts of that rebottle material are seamed together. It's really uncomfortable on the top of your foot if you've got a high arch. In many boots, this area might be where two seams are brought together, and I like to reinforce the toe. But in the Redwood Falls, there's very little reinforcement in the toe. One of the things that really disappoints me about the Redwood Falls boots is the footbed, or insole. On Timberland's higher-end boots, they realize that the components of the outsoles don't offer much cushion, so they compensate by including a high-quality insole with a honeycomb backing and some arch support. They call it anti-fatigue technology. It's pretty impressive, but no such luck with the Redwood. In the Redwood, they use an ortholite footbed. It's a flat EVA liner that's not going to hold up. It's not going to offer much durability, any arch support, and very little cushion. The midsole is also EVA, but between the insole and the midsole is a super hard compressed cellulose particle board. If you've got to do any standing, these boots are going to hurt your feet, they're going to hurt your legs, they're going to hurt your back. Somewhat surprisingly, the Redwood Falls Chelsea boot does have a steel shank. You can see here where it's riveted to the sole. A shank offers a ton of stability to a boot. It acts as a bridge between the height of the heel and the ball of the foot. If it's done well, it can provide a bit of spring while keeping the boot from being too flexible. The pricing of the Redwood Falls Chelsea boot depends a lot on where you're buying them. At a discount retailer like DSW or Shoe Mart or Target, you might see the black colorways dip as low as 80 bucks. That's 62% off the list price of 130. But Timberland still does have some pricing power on some of their most demand colors, like the yellow, which they officially call wheat full grain. They're currently still running about 125 bucks versus the black as low as 80. I found the Redwoods to be a bit snug. Narrower than most boots, and certainly narrower than other Timberlands I've had. I've got a size 10D foot, pretty average, and I find my feet spilling over the sides with this softer leather and an overall lack of support. So many brands have been bought by big companies that move production overseas, drop prices, and advance the distribution. Service and quality fall. There's no better example than Doc Martens. But I think Timberland, which was bought by VF Group, is trying to hold on to some of their history and sustainability. 
Don't get me wrong, they're not a specialty brand like a Blundstone or Solovare. They're mass marketed with hundreds of models of boots, shoes, slippers, tennis shoes, heck, they even sell dog collars. They've got 208 different footwear styles on their site right now, coming from factories all over the world. With that, the Redwood Falls boot falls seriously short in a number of areas. Number one is comfort. If you got a dinner out and you're going to be walking only from the Uber to the restaurant, you'll be fine. But if you want a pair of boots that you might wear comfortable for a day of work, even if that day of work is sitting at your desk, these are not the boots for you. They've got super thin insoles, a super hard compressed footbed, the lack of cushioning, the heel, ouch. I like that they've used waterproof leather. I like the commitment to sustainability. I like that they line the back of the shaft of the boot with leather to cover the counter. I like the outsole. But I don't think these boots are going to last, and I know they're going to hurt your feet. They're not resolable, and I think you're going to be replacing them sooner than you should. You know that saying, cheap boots are expensive because of how quickly you're going to need to replace them, and then it's just going to cost more in the long term? These fall in the cheap boot category. If you're looking for an affordable Nubuck Leather Waterproof Chelsea, I'd look at the Sorel Carson. It's got a bit more cushioning and regularly goes below 100 bucks. Or even the Ugg Biltmore, which I've seen as low as 104. At the end of the day, if you're attracted to that Tim style and you want the iconic yellow boot feel, buy the premium yellow boot. If you want a pair of Chelsea boots, keep looking. There are better ones on the market for just a few bucks more. My advice, a hard pass on the Timberland Redwood Falls Chelsea boot. Hey, if you want to support the channel, remember to like and subscribe. It's the best way to help us keep the reviews coming. I'm John from Chelsea Boot Review.